Hey guys, Dave with First Place Auto Parts. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio today. You know, when it comes time to refresh or rebuild the engine, your classic American muscle car or truck, or maybe you have a late model go fast car that you wanna add some nitrous oxide or a supercharger to, you're gonna have a choice in the type of piston that you use. Look, there's three types of pistons. There's cast, hyper eutectic, and forged. And when it comes time to deciding what piston's right for your build, you know, we need to have a really good understanding of not only what the application is, how they're made, and what kind of components go into it, but also where, they're, where they like to live. Look, you choose it wrong, and what you're gonna get is you're gonna get a piston that breaks, whether it's a skirt, or you're gonna get one that breaks up top on the dome because of detonation. And you wanna make sure you get the right piston. It's not a place to save money. So today's video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the different types, the manufacturing processes, but also the materials that go into them so you have a better understanding when it comes time to pick the right piston for your vehicle and your engine build. So guys, stay tuned. Today, we're talking pistons. By far the most common piston in anything made from the early 50s all the way to today is the cast piston. And the cast piston has some advantages over the other types of choices you might have. For example, they're easy to produce. The way a cast piston is made is hot molten aluminum alloy is poured into a fixed, very high detailed mold. And then once it's allowed to cool, has a little bit of machining and what you have is a ready to use piston. Look, they're super lightweight compared to some of the other pistons and they're very affordable. But don't be tempted to just go with a cast piston because there's some other options that you have that are a little bit better suited to high performance applications. Look, as I had said earlier, if you choose the wrong application, especially if you ever decide to be either, then you want to rev that thing to seven or 8,000 RPMs, maybe you have a rowdy camshaft, or you want to add nitrous oxide, something over say 150 horsepower shot, or you want to add a supercharger with 15, 20 pounds of boost, is something like a cast piston is not going to be what you want to choose. Look, a cast piston is perfect for a daily driver, and it's perfect for even up to 5,000 RPMs. But when you start to really start to add a lot more cylinder pressure to this thing, what you can do is you can crack ring lands on these things, or worse yet, is they can disintegrate. Because you got to remember this piston, what's holding it together is this piston pin at the top of the rod. As this thing goes up and down the stroke, the rod is actually pushing and pulling this thing. So this whole structure has got to be sound. And one of the downsides to a cast piston, when they pour that molten aluminum matrix mix into that mold, is that it sometimes can cool unevenly. And what it gives you is some inclusions. And when you have inclusions, what happens is these things tend to be very brittle and they'll break, especially under when you have high detonation. Say you have a lot of timing or you have a lot of compression ratio, then the thing starts to ping and knock. What you will do is you'll start to knock the ring lens out of these things, or you can break the piston like this one did all together. So cast pistons have their place. Typically it's in a, a mild performance application. Like I said, they're relatively lightweight. They come pre-finished and they're very affordable from the manufacturers. There's very little you have to do to these things. As a matter of fact, there's very little the manufacturers have to do these things when they pop them out of the molds in regards to a machining process. So they're ready to go and the price reflects that. But these things are good for somewhere in the five to 5,500 RPMs. Yeah, you can rev them a little faster, but you're playing with fire, but you certainly don't want to add much nitrous oxide to these things. I had a 70 Chevelle that I had 150 shot on it and I did hit it with nitrous oxide and had cast pistons in it. They're OEM pistons. But what I had to do is I had to back the timing down a bunch and the motor only was an eight and a half to one motor. So I had a lot of room to play, but nitrous oxide and cast pistons really isn't the right recipe. And I was living on borrowed time. Look, I sold the vehicle. I pulled the nitrous kit off and it survived, but I didn't really spray it that hard. I certainly would not have added a supercharger, but I did add a dial, a boost dial back or a timing dial back under the dash. Every time I ran this thing, I retarded timing a good four to six degrees. So cast pistons have their place. Daily drivers are great. Performance motors, not so much. Now it's at this point that we have to talk a little bit about the chemistry, about that molten aluminum that is poured, if you will, into those fixed, very uh, detailed molds that make the pistons. Both your cast pistons and your hyper eutect pistons are cast pistons. They're, they're, quite, they're poured into a, an actual piston mold and out of that comes essentially almost a finished piston. But pistons typically, they, they, what makes up that molten aluminum is a, a combination of metals. It's nickel, magnesium, and also copper. 
And in that, what you're going to have is a certain amount of added of silicon. And silicon is important when you're talking about pistons because what that does, it gives that piston not only a wear rating that's a little bit harder than just the other three chemicals by themselves, but it also helps the piston retain its size under heat and pressure. If you think about aluminum, it tends to want to expand faster than steel or iron. And your cylinder walls many times or most times are one or the other. And so it's going to expand at a different rate. And for a car or a motor to remain efficient, but also make horsepower, that piston has to retain its size. It has to keep that combustion process sealed, which means those rings have to seal not only to the piston, but the cylinder wall effective and efficiently, whether it's 1500 RPMs or 8,000 RPMs. Now, when they add silicon to that aluminum molten aluminum mix, we're up to 12, roughly 12%, when you add 12% silicon to that mix, it basically dissolves into that actual mix and becomes part of the mix. But when you go above that 12%, say to 15%, 12 to 15%, now what you're getting is a saturation point where the silicon actually forms a hard substrate, if you will, in that actual material. It makes them a hyper-eutectic. So when you get a silicon above a saturation point in that actual molten mix of aluminum is what you're going to be using when they make your hyper-eutectic pistons. Now hyper-eutectic pistons are very nice. That they're capable to be used in a performance engine. They're a more durable piston. They don't wear nearly as much. They're not going to rock. The actual area around the piston pin is more robust and is able to take not only the RPMs but the loads that's placed upon it as you go up into higher compression ratios and more RPMs. And if there's a downside to the hyper-eutectic piston is that they're brittle compared to a forged piston. Look, a forged piston is going to give you more room for error. And by error, I mean detonation in particular. The one thing that these things don't like is detonation, especially detonation in the form of when you're using nitrous oxide or something along the lines of a supercharger. So hyper-eutectic pistons from a high-performance application, look, these things make sense in a normally aspirated motor, but if you start to add boost, whether it's from nitrous or a supercharger, you got to better option. And that better solution for performance applications, especially when you get into boosted applications, are none other than the forged pistons, like the Wiseco piston I have here. Forged pistons are made in a totally different manner than the cast or the hyperutectic piston in that an aluminum ingot, which is heated beforehand, is forced into a die under pressure, and what you get is the forged piston. These things are more robust and are able to give you a wider room for error. They tend to be a little more expensive because there's a lot more machining that has to take place on a forged piston afterwards, but these things are absolutely the way to go if you're going to go something beyond normally aspirated. Look, these things can tend to be a little bit heavier. They may have a little more weight, but a lot of your piston manufacturers do some exotic milling and machining to lighten these things up. But either way you look at it, the forged piston, the aluminum piston, is the piston of choice when it comes to high performance applications. Whether it's super high RPMs or, like I said, you're running a ton of boost or a ton of cylinder pressure, 11, 12, 14 to 1 compression ratios, these things can take the, can take the heat and can take them for a long time. Again, these things give you a margin of error or are much stronger than the cast or hyper eutectic pistons just don't. And the downside to a forged piston, look, these things are going to be more costly. It's a more intensive process to make them. Not only is the ingot more expensive than the actual molten aluminum they use on the other pistons, but the whole process of forging it itself. And then the machine work that has to be done afterwards to clean it up and make it ready to go, make sure it's, it's light, as light as can be, but also as robust as can be, it's round and all those different things are important. Look, pistons, a little bit forged pistons, they tend to expand at a little bit different rate than your cast pistons. And traditionally, at least, and my engines, my engine builders have always set them up a little bit looser. So what you can get with forged pistons, you get a little bit of piston slap at times until the motor warms up. But uh, these things are fantastic when it comes time to either really put in some serious nitrous oxide to it or a lot of boost, or you're just gonna turn a lot of RPMs. These things have been a standard for a long time and there's a reason for it. Forged pistons, they deliver. Look, not every car needs forged pistons. Some cars will do just fine with maybe a budget built-in cast or a little bit more performance-oriented with hyper Tactic. But no matter what you decide you need for your vehicle, please check us out at First Place Auto Parts, where we have a ton of performance and restoration parts for the American Muscle Car and Truck, late model stuff too. It's simple to find, super easy to use at fpautoparts.com. Guys, I appreciate you watching this video. And until next time, keep the hammer down, get between the guardrails.